Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folari. And um, well, we, we started something yesterday. Uh, so um, that is looking at, um, you know, the whole uh, inter between countries, you know, banning each other. Uh, it's, it, quite frankly, it has become a diplomatic row. Uh, we were looking at uh, the United Arab Emirates and their attitude to Nigeria, and Nigeria saying it's not going to take it. And um, well, uh, as of this morning, well, Nigeria has been maybe has woken up from the point of view of a lot of nationals uh, if put woken up in quotes because um, now one of the headlines for instance encapsulates the whole idea Nigeria threatens UK, Canada and others. Uh, well, you know, we, we, uh, we don't usually threaten. It's not, our, it's not in our character. But uh, I guess what we're saying is that now we're getting serious. You do us this thing without justification and then you can just expect the same treatment for us. So Nigeria is now saying that UK, Canada, and uh, every other person that has seen fit to put us on the um, red list, it's not going to work unless you're ready for a reciprocal action. Well, that's, um, that's, that's the standard procedure in, in international relations. Um, every nation must maintain its own patriotic stand. Um, and where measures are taken by other nations to either categorize your nation, to categorize your nation as nationals that are not welcome in their country, I think that there, there are steps every nation should take to protect its citizen, to protect its national interest, above all to protect its national pride. There, there, there's no basis for all of this nation to have placed Nigeria on red list. You know, we have suffered a lot. Well, well they, they, they say they're looking out for their nationals. They are looking out for their nationals. And um, the this particular variant, did it break out of Nigeria? Exactly. The was there a, 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 were there cases of fatality reported in Nigeria? You see, at every point in time in my little time, every nation has made Nigeria to be a guinea pig. And there's time for us to stand our ground and tell um, these nations that you can't take Nigeria for granted. I, I'm proud to be a Nigerian. And what, what measures have you put in place to stop Nigerians and you allow other countries that are in Africa? That's, that's discriminatory in, 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 in itself. As far as, as, far as, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, what criteria did they use in saying that, okay, Nigeria is on the red list and not on the green list? Why must we be placed on the red list? Even from the economic point of view, this nation make money from, from Nigeria in terms of um, us going abroad to these various nations for as tourists, they made money from us by buying our petroleum products. So in terms of trade, they don't place us on red list, but in terms of our people traveling, they didn't place our, our petroleum products and other things they benefit from Nigeria on, on red list. Uh, let's look at the case of United Arab Emirates, for example. Um, you had a case where Nigeria made the demand that you should give us three slots. You mm -hmm. had 50 slots in Nigeria. And you are saying you are going 50 to 1. No, 21. They, they, they had 21. They had 20, they have they 21. Had 21 to 3. Mm -hmm. Just look at this. Is, mm -hmm. is that that is three, three flights a day into Nigeria. Three flights a day into, 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 into Nigeria. Nigeria. That's two 20. in Lagos, one in Abuja. One in Abuja. That's 21. 21. And we are asking for three. Uh, but they've explained, and um, that's where the minister was saying that it was most... Um, um, uh, well, impolite. I don't want to. I want to try and be as diplomatic as I can. It was impolite of them. The letter that they had written was impolite, and um, no, 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 they were not no, going to stand because, for it. Because, in because, fact, yeah, I think the minister used the word insulting. No, it is not only because we have not done what we are supposed to do. You recall when this issue, what Nigeria needs to do is to send for the ambassadors of this country, and you withdraw your letter of credence. You must. You must understand that. You must. Um, you must. Show your strength. You must show diplomatic strength. That's to protect your national pride and national. I'm proud to be a Nigerian. And our government must also demonstrate that resolve mm -hmm. to tell anybody, look, for example, if we close our borders and we don't do trade with any other business and we're able to look inward, just like China did, and we're able to look inward, we're able to sort out our own problem. These people will be coming to this country rather than for us to be. We are, we are a nation that can be self-sufficient if only we have the determination 
and the will to do the right thing. We don't need to depend on on look when people. I, I, I guess you, you just said it. Those last few words you ended that previous sentence with. If we decide to do the right thing, now we know the right thing. Uh, unfortunately, the problem is administration after administration has been contending with uh, what they must see. The administrations must see as um, the the uh, Nigeria Nigerians uh, declining uh, to cooperate and do the right thing. So you, f you find distressing things. Unfortunately, one or two Nigerians will do some very, very distressing and embarrassing things abroad. And before we know where we are, the whole world is talking about Nigeria in, in, in that negative, horrible light. Whether, whether you want to go to for, from 419 to go to the drug trafficking, to go to drug, uh, uh, even, even COVID certificate forging. No, you see, when it comes to, I've said it, one, Masquerade is not a Nigerian word. They are masquerade abroad. Corruption is not a Nigerian word. Yeah. It's a function of the narrative. It's a function of how we portray these things. Are there corrupt people in other parts of the world? Of course, of course. Are, are there people, if you watch... No, every if you, country, if you, you look if, at it, you, you watch, find a criminal if, aspect if you, to that country. If, if, if you watch American movies, most movies from <laughs> Nollywood, it's about crime, about people faking passport. Exactly. Fake currencies and the rest of it. And those movies are a reflection of what happened in this society. Now it's about how you portray yourself and how you defend yourself exactly. in the committee of exactly. in the committee exactly. of nations. Exactly. You know? exactly. Do, do you feel that we have been lacking in that regard? No, the desire, that will and that resolved. You know, immediately they took that decision. We also take countermeasures. Well, and then you come as to... As you saw, that graphic we, we put up no, there, no, that, that Nigeria was yet to, you know, effect the ban on... No, we are not airplane. decisive enough. That's, that's the problem. Are you getting my point? You strike me with the first blow. But today... I didn't retaliate. You strike me with the second blow. Yeah. I didn't retaliate. You strike me with the fourth blow. You strike me with so there's a particular saying if a small beating beats you today, uh, a big beating beats you tomorrow. What time the smallest beating we, we take? Because every nation has always made Nigeria to be the boss of showing their diplomatic strength, of showing their strength that okay, we place a ban, even countries that are neighboring countries, we have had issues with African countries, and then they use Nigeria, and then Nigerian government will not respond. We have a case of a Nigerian being killed in Coup d'Ivoire, for example, died in a Coup d'Ivoire prison. The ambassador of Coup d'Ivoire was never invited. So, 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 so this has to do more with, with, with us internally. For example, if you have, if you're a family man, and people keep battering your children outside, your children are being bullied outside. It's just a matter of time. Everybody in the neighborhood will know that. Oh, and you do nothing about it. Everybody will know you can bully it's that soft, man's child. So everybody has turned Nigeria to be a nation that they can bully because they've called us one drug traffickers. They've called us people faking um, passport certificate. We are involved in foreign and the rest of it. And I've asked people, what other name can you give to colonialism? You know, you I'm know. asking you, what other name would you give to colonialism? You Is know. colonialism not four one nine? You've, you've, you've been heavy on um, um, the diplomatic aspect, yet some of these countries, um, countries that have put Nigeria on their, on their, on their red list, uh, they we're supposed to be um, well, diplomatically compatible, if there's any such expression. We, 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 we've had normal, normal, I, won't, I don't know if to go as far as friendly diplomatic relations. Talking about the UK, talking about the UAE, talking about Saudi Arabia, uh, Canada. Argentina, these are people that have put us on the red list, and I think Nigeria has demanded that they reverse that. The PSC meeting we saw a clip of just there, that was among the things that um, was being said there. That I, I saw the Nigerian ambassador's yes. interview at BBC, mm -hmm. and when he was asking questions, and mm -hmm. the reporter couldn't answer the question. I saw the, um, I remember the name of this woman that is the Vice President on Africa Intervention on Vaccine, something like that. Oh, yes, the, yes. The yes, medical that, doctor in Africa. That doctor, Alakija, I think. Alakija, yeah. yeah. And I, she asked a series of questions. Exactly. Which, which was, and I saw the statement released, and I said it, and I shared it with my student, and I shared it with colleagues, that this is the first time that, I, and I'm asking it, but just go and read the statement released by the Federal Ministry of Health mm -hmm. concerning the vaccine. You, all you need to do is to read that statement. And I said, I, I'm proud to be in Nigeria. I said, this is the first time that I'm seeing that Nigerian government is turning the table. How would you give us vaccine that will expire that has two weeks safe life? And he said, Nigeria are wasting. Nigerians, Nigerians are not vaccinated. One million. And the media will go ahead to report those stories, okay. giving the narrative that suits the Western world 
that gave us vaccines which chef life are about expiring. So as far as I'm concerned, it is how you respond to issues. And we are not proactive enough when this thing starts from diplomatic point of view for us to engage in this. In this. And that's why Saudi Arabia, for example, mm -hmm. we had cordial relations. UK, for example, our colonial masters, um, they are just returning some of the artifacts they stole from us um, during the colonial, colon, colonial era. And we had wonderful relationship. And how could UK place Nigeria on, 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 on the red list? And then if you look in terms of trade... It, well, it, it, it's, it's very much like what, the Trump, uh, what, what happened in the Trump era where every second sentence was America first, America first, America first. I guess UK also has this attitude of UK first. But whatever, uh, the Dr. Johnson, uh, by the way, Dr. G.D. Johnson, chief lecturer, NIJ. If I okay, you know, we just went it, into it. We just, just like went into it because, because it's a familiar the thing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we're looking at um, Nigeria demanding that countries that have put us on their red list, namely UK, UAE, Saudi Arabia, Canada, and Argentina, reverse the decision or else, quite frankly. Uh, Mr. Diemi, thank you very much, in Ikorudu, for holding on. Good morning. Um. The moderator and um, Mr. I mean, Dr. Johnson. Yes. Um, I want to bet that um, Dr. Johnson is just talking like a patriotic Nigerian that he is. Um, everybody knows that Nigerians, we, we are having issues with our leaders. Most of the problems that Nigeria is having today that is giving us bad name all over the world is a leadership problem. You understand? There is nothing that has made any nation in the world great that Nigeria does not have except good leadership. Until we get it right, we studied abroad. What is going on today in the 70s, 80s, when we were students abroad? You know, Nigerians were respected because we behaved. You will never see Nigerians getting involved in drugs and all of those things. But today, youth in Nigeria will walk through the desert to get to Europe. What is it that is driving those youth out of their own country? Nigeria is insecure. There are a lot of things is wrong with us. What is it that they are doing to fix all of these things? Dr. Gide, you are just speaking like a patriotic Nigeria that you are. You know a lot of things, uh, you know, are wrong with this society, and the leadership has to get it right. We have to get the right people into the leadership position of this country. Until we do, until we do that, they will not stop kicking us in the house. Okay. All right. Thank you they very much. They will not much. stop kicking us in the house. They will stop, you know, messing us up. Nigeria leaders should stop messing us up. They are the cause of our problems. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Diemi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for calling in. Um, yeah, um, you know, as Mr. Diemi said, uh, and as we have said here, Nigeria, like other countries, uh, you know, they, they have their, their, their issues. But the point is, it's become, for whatever reason, grossly exaggerated. We often hear, even before the advent of Omicron and uh, COVID-19, we hear Nigerians narrating um, their experiences at international airports simply because they are carrying a Nigerian passport. Imagine, for example, UAE, according to news reports, saying that not only will they not, you know, you know, fly no Nigeria, they, but they, any other flights bringing Nigeria. They are asking no, all other airlines not, not to come. bring Nigerian passport holding uh, passengers to the UAE. And Mr. DME's position there, and I think it was also yours, is that, you know, quite frankly, our, our leaders in, in, through the administrations, uh, you say they, it is they that have let us down by, by showing us as, as something of a soft touch. One, one thing I agree with him is with respect to our leaders. They are not forthright and they are not decisive because they have a lot of interest to protect in these countries. All of their investment in most of these countries, but but, 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 but you these countries, when they seek medical services, but you'll admit that, that that I agree with him on that. Yeah. That our leaders have let us down with respect, and that's why they but are not. Isn't what you've just said uh, something uh, of a blanket uh, statement? So, so no, it's not a blanket that statement that doesn't apply to uh, all most of us. You look, think I, I have said it? I have said it. Look, concerning that, there's no. Uh, most of our leaders have properties abroad. Have you seen the governor of New York having property in Nigeria or having property in South Africa? <laughs> or have you seen the mayor of London having property in Lagos or in Ikoyi? Mm -hmm. Our mm -hmm. leaders, most of them, they showcase it that they have properties in London. So, they, it's, so it's as a, a result of, of that, in order to, it's, a, it's a sort of private. In order to protect their interest, 
their economic interest mm -hmm. and their family most of their children are there so they will not come out strongly against i read in the papers where one of the ministers when they are even stopping nigerians from going to dubai one of the ministers took his family for the holiday one of the ministers okay to, for, for the holiday uh, now uh, uh, one okay. moment sir shehu in uh, bochi good morning sir shehu in bochi good morning Thank you for good calling morning. in. Go ahead quickly, please. Thank you very much. Uh, please, I will, I will start by saying, uh, uh, please, uh, thank you very much for this wonderful program. At least, uh, you people thank are you. making it very easy for us to understand what is really happening within our country and, uh, of course, overseas. So, regarding to this aspect, what I'm trying to say is, uh, what is really happening uh, 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 the international community have justification to understand with what is happening with our so-called country. What is what is happening in our country uh, is so bad, is so bad. Our leaders are tarnishing our images. You understand uh, from the issue that has to do in terms of the economy. You understand health wise. Oh, um, uh, well, Shehu, we lost uh, Shehu's connection there. Um, I, I was going to query him a bit more on his statement that our leaders have been tarnishing uh, our uh, reputation uh, because I don't imagine that's the intention of any leader. In fact, it doesn't, um, it, 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 it's not in any leader's interest to tarnish the reputation of Nigeria. Now, there are countries in this world that are reputed for drug trafficking. Yes into the United States of America and other parts of the world where they placed on red list. I'm asking you that the fact that um, there are some elements in Nigeria, as I exaggerated and, and I believe that um, the media has a role to play in the type of narrative we provide to, this, to these issues. All Nigerians are not criminals. And there is no nation that is devoid of criminals. There is no nation of the world. However, the way we have painted this picture is just that all and, you and you bring the press, you, you bring the press. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, that it's, the way the, the press reports uh, these the, matters. Report this issue. I think is there corruption in American system? I've said the corruption is not in Nigerian world. There is a particular case involving the British Prime Minister in which um, thirteen thousand pounds was used to innovate was gotten from a donor. It was not and was not gotten through an appropriate an appropriate channel through the conservative. So when people talk about corruption, but do you see that in the front pages of the Sun, Daily Mail, and the rest of it? Mm. So you see, but, but it is so, the way so Nigerians. It, so, so, it is the way we uh, as listen. First and foremost, the media has a nationalistic and a patriotic responsibility. First. First, in what way have we projected? You look, I, I've told people well, what, that. What would you say? I've heard some Nigerians abroad write out there that, look, Nigeria is busy complaining and quote, these are our own compatriots. These are not foreign nationals. Our own compatriots saying that um, instead of Nigeria to look at why are we suddenly finding ourselves on this red list that other African countries are not finding themselves on, they say we're busy, you know, you know, crying into our Akamo and our Ogi instead of being realistic and say, what is it that Ghana has been doing? What is it that, uh, you know, and on and on Liberia, uh, that they are not on the watch list, I mean, uh, uh, on the red list, but it's only Nigeria. Say, they, it, in, their, in their purview, if Nigerians were to... How many Ghanaian governors have houses in London? I'm asking you, Uncle Yori. So, so, so do, 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 do you think we were targeted? No, be, be, look, Nigeria display, we, we are crying that we didn't have money to buy vaccine. And here you have your leaders traveling abroad and other citizens of your country. All you need to do is to look at your friends, family, and what have you. When they go up, the way they display, how compare the way Nigerians display opulence abroad with other African countries. Wow. Either from, from, wow. from, 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 from an ordinary person on the street to the political class. Just look at the, the way, the type of lifestyle an average Nigerian leaves. And what is it about the Nigerian? Why, 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 since you're saying this, why is it that Nigerians are like that, Liberians are not like that? Nigerians are like that. Uh, because because we, we suffered a lot of deprivation at home. It's a poverty mentality. So, okay. Now, so, you so see, we're not having this conspicuous now, consumption exactly mentality. Exactly. To show that, well, I have been delivered 
from the deprivation oh, and the oppression. Oh, that's, yeah. that's, that's and not... So it becomes become something of a national a nice character if you don't, abroad. Exactly. So if you don't go abroad and you don't showcase that oh, you have arrived, you display your wealth and everything. You know what we see that we display in Nigeria? Other African nationals don't do it. Um, uh, Chidi in Kafanchan. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Thank you for calling in. Good morning, Dr. Jide Johnson. Good morning, sir. Thank you so very much. Um, I am delighted in the program that you people are holding at this particular time. Um, Nigeria needs to get things properly done, especially to affect the citizenry in our country. Let the leadership we have in the country begin to treat the citizenry very, very well so that the idea of leaving our country will be reduced. And whomsoever that wishes to go outside this, the shores of this country will have a reason that is genuine and is not going there to portray a wrong image of Nigerians, both at home and the government. But all these things need a diplomatic approach in order to put things in a right perspective for Nigerians and some other countries in as much as the United Nations and the Commonwealth and some other international bodies that Nigerians are signatory to are concerned. I want us to put ourselves together first. Thank you so very much, and God bless Nigeria. Thank you very much, Chidi. The difficulty with Chidi's position is that it's like a, it's, it's, it's like a, a, a moral admonition that, look, we all of us, Muslim, Christian, or whatever, we know the right thing. That, that is, it's not a matter of that we need seminars in order to know how to uh, uh, be morally upright. There are very few, I would guess, this is a pure guess on my part, very few countries that are much more church going than Nigerians. There is, uh, that's not to do, I've said it. I mean, you know, that's where you learn all about the right, that's, that's where you learn you about the, 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 the Ten Commandments, right? Is stealing it, is in there. Is, so stealing is, is in there. Is, is, Thou shalt not steal. It's stupidity for you to go to church on Monday morning. When is the time for you to walk? Are you getting my point? And you have all of that. It, it has nothing to do with religion. It has to do with the general attitude of the people. Yeah, but and doesn't that show how much we connect to spirituality? Doesn't that, say, what, Yoli, doesn't that yeah, indicate how much we... We have taught you this rule. <laughs> he that does not walk, let him not heal. As and long yeah. as the heart remains, seed time and harvest time. There's no amount of prayer that you can pray. You put a corn here. And that corn will grow, Uncle Yori. You must find the right condition. Even United Arab Emirates have aligned their calendar from Thursday to, um, to Sunday to now Mondays to Friday. So it is very, very important for us to take, let's take the religion out of it. One of the things we need to do is for us to ask ourselves this question. One, let us... Let us stop all our leaders from going abroad for medical treatment. You know, somebody said that. One. Stop, let's, stop, stop all our leaders from close, sending their children exactly, abroad to school. Let, just let's take a five year. Within the next five years, no Nigerian head of state will travel out of this country. No public official will travel out of this country. We will solve our problem and we will make our nation attractive where, for others to come. Where, the reason where, why, where are we going to get the Nigerian leader or a bunch of a handful of governors that are going to subscribe to what you are saying? We do that, where we are we going to get them from? This, Wait now, where are we going to get those people? We, we have to elect that, them. Until we do that, we will be subjected to this dehumanizing condition that a small, that different nations will be targeting us and become the boss. Even African countries, Uncle even African countries, African countries, mm -hmm. African countries take Nigeria for granted. Countries that we have helped in the past, they take us for granted. The, the so bottom line is that we have a lot of Nigerians going out of this country and not coming back to this country. If we reorganize our nation and we say, you know what, we want to look in what? People will want to come to Nigeria. In the 80s, in the 90s, we have students, we yeah. have lecturers from yeah. India, yeah. from US, yeah. secondary school principal, secondary school teachers, Things have changed. From, from, from England, from Scotland, let from me, every part of the... Let, that's when Nigeria was a nation of respect. Let me bring Samson into the conversation. Good morning, Samson in Abuja. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning sir. sir. Thank you for calling in. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, the issue right now is like a chase of in secondary school uh, 
Yeah, it's like a case of in the secondary school, like the SS3 students banned the SS1 student from coming to their block. And the JS1 students right now are saying that SS3 students should not come to their block. It's not right. Because there's nothing the SS3 students are going to find in their block. So this it all begins with red space. There is nothing there is nothing the UK or the Canada wants from us right now because the leadership is very, very bad. That's all I have to say right now. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much. I think it was relating to your rhetorical question of uh, do you find Niger uh, Americans coming, you know, wanting to come here, uh, wanting to come and buy property here, and then, you know, but actually you do find some foreign nationals. You, my you do have my, foreign my nationals pastor, doing precisely all you, that. All you need to do is to go to the airport yes. and look at the <coughs> pigmentation of people going out and people coming in. What we need to do is just to go to the airport now. And you see that, why are, why are foreigners coming to Nigeria there are no opportunities in Nigeria? Of course there are. There are the, 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 in fact, it's, it's an inverse relationship. You see, Af Nigerians leaving the country, another national is coming into this. If by the reason of migration that we have witnessed over time, you recall in 1984, there was a campaign, Andrew, please don't, don't check out, which was meant to, to stem migration. I knew how many reference letters I've signed. I knew the number of my students that are in UK now for master's program. And I knew close family and friends that have relocated. Are you getting me? Nigerians are moving out in droves. Yet people are coming into this country. Exactly. But the way out for us to earn back our respect is very simple. It is very, very simple. If our leaders don't fund over these foreign countries, if our leaders don't go buy properties in this country, if our leaders are well concerned about staying at home and making the hospital to work, providing security, there are many tourist attractions in Nigeria natural tourist attraction not human created in nigeria that you can never find in any anywhere else in the world there are different species of animal in nigeria that you can't find it is just that we have not done the right thing. now like everyone has said it's about leadership and until we become inward looking as far as i'm concerned let those countries go ahead with what they want to you do. know if you don't have anything what is it about uk you know, this cold is weather and my theory, if not for the currency, the value of Nigeria, that the value of Naira has become worthless. I don't know how you look at it. Um, look, here we are. Nigeria is what it is. Um, we're talking about poverty levels. You know, we're talking about the difficulties that we have. Um, yet, it is not entirely unheard of um, for Nigerians to have their own planes now. You're talking about a poor society, right? You're talking about total poverty, yet we have graduated to that level where there are many, many Nigerians who own their own planes. The rest of the conversation is not going to be interesting to them. If you happen to be a Dangote, if you happen to be maybe an Otedola or some other billionaire that I can't remember right now, nobody's going to ask you any questions. Yeah, those are People know where your shop is, so to speak. They know where your shop is, and that it is from that shop that he made his money. It is, it is that uneven distribution of wealth uh -huh. that we are talking about. Um, so, is so, that so uneven, uh, and that if you admit that, you can now, see that all of your patriotic as you are discussions stopping, as you are stopping are going to be falling on deaf ears. As you are stopping Nigerians mm -hmm. from traveling, you cannot stop Nigerians that have diplomatic passport from going to Dubai. You cannot stop Nigerians that have diplomatic passport from going to the United Kingdom. So there are two levels. There so are two levels. There, there, there so it is the there, ordinary there is more man. Than one level of it is the ordinary man on the street yeah, that well, suffers. And it, that's isn't he the saying, man who wields the real power? And and then that's why we are saying that you should stop everybody as a nation. We say, you know what, Mr. President, we don't want you to travel. We have seen presidents of African countries that have never traveled out of their country. Yeah, but are you, get, are you I, getting my point? I, I, now, what is, is it? Where this conversation is going, Dr. Johnson, where this conversation is going, the very ordinary Nigerian that's walking the street, you know, it is him or her that is going to bring about what you talk about by saying that we don't want through my ballot. Exactly. We, we are no. not going to tolerate this kind of person. But, you see, we've come now to the political you know, uh, 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 sphere. 
when they start off where they start off from, 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 from the parties and their, you know, what do they call those things, uh, getting their candidates, you know, that's where it all gets skewed. You see? You know, that's where it all gets skewed. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for an excellent chap, right, people now and again remember the upright character of Nyerere, for example, of Tanzania back in the day. If you're looking for that kind of chap, in Nigerian politics, he won't even have a chance. Oh, we are I agree with you in totality. We have found ourselves in a Sorry, sir. Street. I'll come back to you. Let me take Collins. Mm -hmm. Collins has called in. Good morning, Mr. Collins. I am told that we have Collins on the line. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Okay, we're waiting for you. Please go ahead. Good morning. My name is uh, Kendi. I'm calling from Georgia. Oh, sorry. Your name is not Collins. No. Oh, sorry. My name is Kendi. Uh, pl please go ahead. Sorry about that mistake. Yeah. Please go ahead. No problem. Concerning this issue of ban or placing... Yes, countries okay. unjustifiably putting us on their red list. Let's take a vivid, uh, let's take a vivid uh, example of one. All our governors traveling with convoys, how many of them are they travel through the road? Many of them travel by air, so they don't know the plight of the nation. So my own, is that my own contribution is that they should stay in Nigeria. Let's patronize our local things. We keep saying let's patronize our local things. How many, how many are we encouraging? Let's try and encourage the local things we have in Nigeria. What's the essence of going to abroad to take <laughs> medic to look to go okay. for medical check -up? We have a lot of medical personnel that they are capable of taking care of the citizens in yeah. our countries here. Yeah. There's no need of going to abroad. Most of them, why they are saying they are after Nigeria to place UK and other countries on red list is because of their selfish economic interest. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, thank you very much uh, for calling in. You see, I, I, I hear what is being said. I remember back in, um, I, I think it must have been 79, uh, Abbasanjo was still, you know, he was still, he was, he was about to hand over. And um, uh, I recall that. Um, because of President Obasanjo's attitude about Nigeria, proud Nigerians, uh, by Nigeria and all of that, I remember a state banquet that as a reporter I was able to you know, attend. attend. And um, the fair on, on the whole, it was a banquet, and you know what a banquet connotes. There were things like Agidi, what is Agidi in English? Uh, uh, echo. Yeah. E echo and... Uh, and uh, and uh, vegetable soup, bure soup. You know, Obasanjo, that was how he designed his menu. Oh, but dear. he was doing that. I wonder if my people didn't much, you know, look down on it and say, what is all of this? I mean, instead of this man putting caviar and uh, whatever when it they is. When they have their own banquet, would they put pande diam? Uh, where did, where, 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 this is the problem. Now, this is what put, Abbas and Joe was know, saying. Would they put pande But this is what Abbas and Joe was saying, that nation. if it's a banquet, we borrow the word banquet from over there. Our own banquets are pounded yam, you know, pounded yam and all amala. of that. Um, uh, uh, there you go. That's amala, eba. Yeah, exactly. Those are so. Those this are is our identity, uh -huh. you know. Uh, but bankukusu. But does every Nigerian agree with we you? Must, um, for us to move forward, so you can't legislate you see, that now. You see, you can't we, legislate. We can't that. legislate as a people. We can't legislate as a people. We can. You see, until we become inward looking, how many governors of Nigeria in the sixties have houses abroad? How many governors or leaders do travel abroad for medical treatment? You know, Uncle Yori, ask anyone that cares to listen. You know the way an average Nigerian, an average student in Ife, in the 60s, in the 70s, the way they see you that you have gone to school in America, how do they see them? That they, they are the ones that couldn't get admission in Nigeria. And so you ran off to America. You ran off to America. Where, to where, where to it was relatively easy. Yeah, easy for you to, to get. You know, to, never to, mind your <laughs> two or three A-levels A -level requirement. Yeah. I, that, America had a different system. A different system. system for you to get admitted. How did we get to where we are now? Indeed. It was because we were inward looking. Let's go back to that measure. Do military head of state travel abroad let me regularly? Take, let me bring in Tony. Tony Manchester. Good morning, sir. Yes, good morning, um, Uncle Yuri. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. Yes, um, I've been following your discussion this morning. And um, I would like to take a different perspective. It is nice, I think I support your guest, Dr. Johnson. 
in um, looking at the situation retrospectively. What, what have we done? What have we done to be in a situation where we find ourselves? That's the question you should be asking um, the show. Once we were very good, we had good teachers. I grew up in Nigeria. We had Wole Wole, we had people obeying the laws. What, what, what happened? At what point did we deviate or derailed? So that is the question, and how do we get back to that point? That is the question you should be asking, not blaming other nations or international bodies or whatever. Uh, uh, Tony, thank you very much. Tony, for calling in from Manchester. You know, this is an age-old question. Where did we, as a people, um, uh, where did we drop the ball? Um, because... Um, what he's saying is self-evident to most people. There was a time when values mattered, education was all important. Where did it all fall apart? And so it didn't matter anymore. In fact, illiterates now boast of, don't worry, I will hire because, a professor. Because you have I will become, hire a professor. Because you have become materialistic in nature. Where did, that, what, what, what was happening to that materialism, and that materialism before, materialism before then, your, before now? That materialism was promoted by religious institutions religious institutions. i thought you were even going where to go to the military no, that it no, is no, when no, the no, military no, no, came no, 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 that no, no, no. values when changed we measure the level of faith by the size of your auditorium by the size of the auditorium when everything is about breakthroughs and not values in the society that's where that's where we missed it you think that, yeah that's where that's that's where that's where we we where, that's ha, 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 remember back in the day uh general Yaw yakubo gowan as he was then our problem is not uh money, money. but our problem is how to, how to spend, spend it money you know that, that uh, 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 you, uh, uh, you know uh, uh, those uh, were not notions that we had been used to before that time and from then on it ran away with us uh, but let me bring in andrew i'll come back to you sir uh, good morning andrew this andrew did not check out good morning, uh, uh, good morning are you the andrew that was being begged back in the day not to check out uh, no 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 this is a new one <laughs> <laughs> good morning Uncle Yari. good morning sir yes i want to i want to i want to thank um, the man at your uh, dr jd right. johnson Chief yes, Lecturer yes, NIG. i appreciate him a lot mm. Uh, Uncle Yori, see, I want to tell you from the first hand, we, we, we got it all wrong. You see, in our country here, yeah, why are we speaking in, uh, English? Why are we not speaking our, our native dialect? Look at China. China is speaking their dialect. They bring everything from their place. They were, they were nobody in, in, in the back, back then. But now they are somebody. I believe Nigeria is going that, that, that lane. Everybody is on top of us now. But I believe time will come, Nigeria will be on top of the world. What I'm trying to say is that, Uncle Yori, we are suffering in our country. Leave bans from the uh, UK and everybody. We are suffering here. If you check the Indians that are leading all these companies, if you check the, the Lebanese, they are suffering our own citizens in our country. I'm very angry because I am seeing it face to we can't, we can't talk all this. We're talking about the marine sector. We are talking about so many sectors. We should stop. We should bring a law where they will ban every person that is coming into our um, 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 ministry, governors, anybody that is want to lead us, they should stay in our country. That is how this country will, will move forward. Okay. Because they'll keep on playing with us. Okay. Uh, I, you I, can't I, compare. Uh, 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 sorry to say, sorry, just give me one minute. You can't compare. They can never. I have told people you cannot compare Ghana to Nigeria. Forget the, the whatever news you're hearing from the television. We one on one have been there before. You can't compare we to any of these uh, African countries. We are far far better than them. But the problem is our leader. They have to see us to be that Nigeria. Do you know that India man will tell you that I can search around and I find my way. This is Nigeria. I can do anything and I go free. Yeah. So please, Uncle, we need solid uh, 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 this thing whereby we can be able to pin these people here and let them back our country. Let's stay here and. And do anything you want to do here. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much uh, for calling economy. in. Because it's going back to what you were saying. Lagos. We need to be looking inward. Lagos. But, but th that is a message that has been preached to Nigerians. I took you back to uh, General Obasanjo. 
78, 9. Now, Nobody is listening you, to him. If you, if you have always checked up on just view, mm. it's pan-Africanism mm -hmm. and pan-nationalism. That has always been his view. Now, people usually make one wrong analogy comparing Nigeria to Ghana. The economy of Ghana cannot compete with the economy of Lagos. Even the population of Lagos, I'm not too sure if it's not much more than, much more than Ghana. If you take Lagos out of Nigeria and you turn Lagos to a country, it will compete effectively, if not better than, 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 than Ghana. Our population is our advantage. That's why you see foreigners still coming to it's this country. It's our advantage. It's also our, our disadvantage. Inheritance no, we don't. The, the, no, no, no. NASA. It's just because it, we don't know. To every head, look. It's it's in the principle of marketing. In the principle of marketing, Uncle Yori, mm. you have the mass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All you just need is the product. Now, for us to look inward, we must take steps. As far as I'm concerned, those that have stolen money from this country. We never pray for the value yeah. of Naira and dollar to be the same. They've stolen their money. Their money is in foreign currency. Exactly. So the moment the Naira matches the dollar, the money they have stolen becomes worthless and useless. Are you getting it now? And when people talk about their travel abroad, we have friends that have traveled abroad. Many Nigerians want to come back to this country because there's no place like home. Apart, However, apart from that, a lot of Nigerians are not doing well abroad. No, they are, they are they, underemployed. They, 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 they are, they, they're not <laughs> able to come back home simply because they can't raise the fare to come back they, home. They, they, nah, I'm not saying every Nigerian out there is like that, just, but there are many the, who others, those who are succeeding in come. research, we call them outliers. There are about three or four percent exactly. that are doing what they are supposed to do. We've seen people with master's degree in Nigeria going abroad to do jobs which Itetu they would never do in Nigeria. The day we raise the value of Naira, to say to one dollar to to one hundred naira, I'm telling you, you see that the shores of Nigeria will be filled with Nigerian coming, and that takes Fred, about I wanted us to looking thank Fred for holding on all this okay. while. Good morning, Fred in Onike. Fred in Onike, Lagos. Onike, yeah, by Lagos. Are you still with us? Yes, I am. Fred. Yeah. If Fred is with Good us, morning. go right ahead now, please. Yeah, good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning, sir. Yeah, I greet uh, Dr. Johnson as well. Yes, thank you. Yeah, Dr. I Johnson. quite enjoy the, morning, the topic sir. you have this morning. Okay. I'm following your discussion. Can you hear me? We can hear you, sir. It, it's all right. I just want to align with uh, what the other speaker just said a while ago that we have issues with the leadership of this country. That is just the major issue. Nigerians try. That's why everywhere you find a Nigerian, they try as much as possible to do well. It only tells you that they have that inner will, inner desire to excel. But when the climate within which you operate in a particular place, you call your own, does not allow for every of that, it becomes a very huge issue. Just the same way we have seen it in the country, the way it's playing out as well. Imagine Nigerians leaving the country in droves. They don't even mind. Look at the number of deaths. All because they need to leave the country. Why should they leave the country? These are the issues. And that's why people are priced in that manner. Of course, we are looked over. And we are looked down upon. Mm. Because of what the leadership has really put upon it. That is the major issue. All right, if the then. leadership turns it right, it is going to be good, obviously, yes. Well, I, I want to... Thank you, Okoyori. Thank you very much, Fred, for calling in. It's interesting. We started this from this whole matter about Nigeria, you know, saying that People should watch it. You know, these countries that are busy putting us on their red list, that they might, that Nigeria might retaliate. It hasn't exactly done so now, but the Minister of Aviation was hopeful that by Tuesday, a decision uh, can possibly have been reached. But we started it from that point of view. And now people are calling in and saying, you know, we've been, we're Nigerians. We've been studying this whole issue. It's the quality and caliber of leadership that we have been having. It's not about this administration now. Over the years. Over the administrations, going back in time, that they are the people, so say our viewers, that have done us in. And now, uh, well, you know the Yoruba proverb about, uh, how do you say in English? And Laba Benishon Leke Kirama Agori. I'm sorry, but the leaders themselves were the catalysts, so they say, 
uh, for the situation that we find ourselves in, and then so therefore, why why will uh, why will Canada, Argentina, uh, UAE, uh, the UK, why will they not be climbing all over us this that's, way? That's why that the, 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 the general consensus is that let us solve our problem. But, but if we solve our own problem, are we on the way to doing that? that and that's, that's, that's the base of our discourse, and that's the base of our discourse. That look, leave this nation alone. This nation's alone. If we solve our own problem. Why are Americans not living in America? Why are Americans not migrating to other countries? And don't forget maybe, that until maybe, 19... Maybe, maybe until Americans 19, are putting their best foot forward. <coughs> no, until Sorry, 1941, America America was an isolated nation. Until 1941. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. America was an isolated nation. Did not participate in global affairs deeply and, and has existed for more than 150 years. You know, prior, to, prior, prior, prior to that, prior to the bomb being dumped in Pearl Harbor in, in Hawaii, and that's what brought America into in, in, in international diplomacy. So we need to be inward looking. And that's that's just the solution. We do. Let, we do. let our leaders be that. interested. Any but, governor, but, let the people of in, each state ask their governor not sir, to travel abroad. Dr. Johnson, inward looking, yes. I hope in that inward looking, it would be to be finding the best that Nigeria has to offer. You and I have, I have an idea. Let me not join myself with you. You are the lecturer here we have a notion of the situation and how selections are made for leadership are they necessarily the best that nigeria has to offer you know it's going to become a big conversation but in the meanwhile mr solomon in kaduna good morning they told me solomon in kaduna was on the line yes oh. i'm on the line still. and now we're waiting for you sir please go ahead yeah, good, morning. good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning. Morning. Good morning, the wise man. <laughs> Dr. Hello, Johnson. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, the wise man. <laughs> okay. Let, Hello, what, what do you have Yori, to say, Solomon? Morning. Hello, good morning. I can hear you. Thank you for calling in. What would you like to say? Yeah. Hello? Hello. 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 Yeah, good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning, sir. Yeah. Kudos to Dr. Jide as well. Yes. Thank you, sir. Kudos to Dr. Jide. Yeah, good morning. You, you've got to get past that stage. We, 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 thank you very much for calling in. Uh, we answered good morning about three times, but uh, I think something has gone wrong. You couldn't have been hearing us. That's why you were wanting to make assurance doubly sure that we were uh, in contact, and we are. Unfortunately, you couldn't hear that. Um, so just like everybody else has been saying, whether it is Chidi in Kafanchan, Samson in Abuja, you know, uh, you know, Shehu in Bauchi, uh, Solomon in Kaduna, maybe Fred in uh, uh, Odike, all of them are saying that it's the caliber of leadership that we find ourselves saddled with. And I chose the word saddled with. It's, you know, we're saddled with it because we have to take it, depending on, for, because of the process by which it came. But there are too many Nigerians that continue to moan that, um, well, our political systems don't allow us to bring out the best that will give us that which we think we need. It's a power game. It's about participation. Are you interested in participating in the process? Aha, uh -huh, okay. That's, that's, that's the thing. Participation. The, the, yeah, participation, the degree of involvement. Let everybody get involved in this conversation. Let us all get involved. For me, I think that we should get to a stage in which we should hold our leaders accountable. And as a people, we should make a demand. We should set agenda for them. What do we want the next level they of leadership? They say leaders know us so well, they know how to shut us up. This no, is an no, allegation. No, this no, is an no, allegation. No, no, no. Oh, okay, already, I'm not saying it's a fact. But, but, they say our but leaders we, know us so well, we have critical they can shut us up we have critical from stakeholders. asking tough questions. No, we have critical stakeholders in this system. For example, Section 22 of 1999 Constitution, as amended, says inter earlier that the press shall be the watchdog <coughs> and there's a second part which we are silent about he said shall hold government accountable mm -hmm. said so they shall hold government accountable mm -hmm. so they must bring their account to the table we must point it out it is it is it, we make it to be a common impeachable offense in the next five years okay let's okay. have it as a legal instrument that no governor must send his children abroad to school no president, no public official, no public official, no civil servant, no permanent secretaries. Are you with me? 
must send or must go abroad for medical treatment. Whatever medical treatment no, you want to have, but you no. have it in Nigeria. Listen now, can but, the president of America go for medical treatment in Britain? Has he gone for one in Germany? I'm asking you, or the one from India? The president okay. of India, has he been flown to Saudi Arabia or has he been flown to other countries? For, in no, the past, that's because see, those countries have excellence in those in areas. In the past, they used those to bring the royal family of the royal family of Saudi Arabia used to come to UCH in Ibadan for their medical treatment. Really? We yes, we must. Okay. We must. We, we, we must. We got to leave it here now. <laughs> okay, we, we, we must. We, we must be time. inward. Look for us to earn our respect back. We must be inward looking and I think to, look, to look at what is wrong with us, address the issue. Once we address the issue, we regain back our strength, we regain back our pride. What is great, what is good about Great Britain weather? We've got to leave it here. Thank you very much, Dr. Johnson. We started off by looking at Nigeria threatening UK, Canada, you know, and some other countries uh, among them, what Canada, Argentina, that if you don't reverse yourself, we will have to treat you the way you are treating us. And that has led on to the larger conversation of um, how well are we treating ourselves? How well are our, leader, uh, our leaders projecting us? Uh, how well are our leaders uh, leading the country? And so why would you be surprised uh, when foreign countries uh, begin to, you know, quite frankly, take on due advantage of us? That's our program today. We hope um, this will be sorted out pretty soon to our advantage, or at least to the mutual benefit of both uh, parties in this conversation. Um, so thank you very much, Dr. G.D. Johnson, Pleasure to you know, Chief you Lecturer, are. Nigerian Institute of Journalism. That's our program today. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I'm Yori Folarin. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>